After a year-long study of issues and challenges faced by Hawaii's organic food industry, the results are out. The report, Growing Organics, Moving Hawaii's Organic Industry Forward, puts forth 58 recommendations to increase organic food production and distribution, improve access to technical assistance, promote producer and consumer education, reduce costs, and foster greater advocacy for certified organic food production in Hawaii, among others. We recently spoke to Liam Kern a communications specialist with the Kohala Center. The independent nonprofit applied for USDA Specialty Crops Block Development Grant funding through the Hawaii Department of Agriculture to conduct an analysis. And so where we, where we ended up was recommending that there be sort of three entities, that there be a, a, a dedicated program office at the Hawaii Department of Agriculture, that the HDOA also create an organic industry advisory council that would advise it, and then that uh, the Hawaii Organic Farming Association would make a couple of sort of tweaks and changes to, to be a more representative organization, to broaden its membership, uh, to give its membership more of a say in what it does, uh, to diversify its board uh, a little bit further, and then also define member benefits to, to, to create incentives for people to join the organization. So that's where we netted out with representation, but we also uh, uh, identified 58 recommendations uh, spanning 10 different issue areas. Uh, so these include things like uh, processing facilities and distribution channels and uh, inputs, fertilizers, uh, creating more fertilizers locally so that we're not spending so much, so farmers aren't spending so much money to import fertilizers that aren't really made for Hawaii's uh, unique climates and, and, uh, and agricultural conditions. So it really covers a very broad spectrum and it identifies uh, a host of existing organizations from government agencies on the state and the county level uh, to the University of Hawaii uh, to retailers to uh, private distributors uh, and really kind of runs a spectrum and, and identifies those organizations and say essentially says here are some things that you could do to help you know sort of nurture the organic industry and increase organic production within the state. So we focused on certified organic, kind of what you're putting in your soil and putting on your, your produce. It deals with the, the seed that you're growing from as well. Is it a pure, is it a certified organic strain of seed? Is it a, a conventional seed? Is it a genetically modified seed? Uh, so certified organic by, by definition doesn't allow for synthetic pesticides and herbicides. Uh, it does allow for, there are pesticides that are used, but they're organic. <laughs> fertilizers and pesticides and, and, and I want to be very clear that that if somebody markets their product as organic they have to be certified organic if they go if they say oh I grow organically they're actually in violation of federal law and they can be fined up to eleven thousand dollars per incident so part of one, one of our recommendations actually focuses around education going out to these growers and farmers and, and folks that, that sell at farmers markets and whatnot and promote their products as organic but they're not certified and to let them know hey you could be facing some very serious consequences for doing this so to help them uh, either get on the path toward certified organic or to help them market their product in a more appropriate and legally compliant way. The final report and additional information about the study are available online at the Kohala Center website.